come again. <laughs> I'm getting tired of watching this clip. I'm fired up. I'm ready to play. Well, Maddie, I mean, it, it's just a culmination of a lot of spectacular plays, that's for sure. Nick, it brings a, a smile to our faces when you relive all those moments. I get goosebumps. Just the excitement and energy, enthusiasm, and it was such a special first time moment for everybody. Um, man, it's, it's really fun to look back on. It wasn't just about Toronto. It wasn't just about Ontario. It was about an entire country. And to me, that's what made this magical run so special. No doubt about it. Maddie. I think that the biggest thing I always say is sharing it with everybody has been the most fun and hearing their stories from, from uh, people on planes that were gathered around a laptop, taking a flight, watching the game together, to people in offices having, having get-togethers, to wherever they were watching it, because everybody was watching it. Uh, so many different settings, all the Jurassic Parks. Um, really cool because, you know, like I keep saying, when you're in the middle of it, you didn't know everybody was experiencing that. And now it's, you can, you can look back on it and see it all and just adds to the specialness of the moment. It really does. You know what I think the initial thought was? I, I could probably guess. <laughs> here we go here again. Here we go again. <laughs> here here yeah, we go yeah. again. Don't. Took the, took no, the words right not, out of my mouth, man. I knew that was coming. Not, 20, not 2019. Yeah, that yeah. wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah. Right in the heart with the game winner. Yeah, hit him, hit him hard as the as this clip showed there. It was a defining moment of the of the run. Losing this game was was a big defining moment of the of the championship run. Why do you say that? Well, after we hit them hard, and and uh, they accepted that they needed to play harder, better, tougher. Uh, we went out there in game two and played defense like I've never seen before. That kind of opened my eyes to okay, this team does have a specialness here that can take them a long way. I told them in the locker room after the game, if you play defense like that, you can go as far as you want to go. Gasol there. They get the switch. Kawhi takes it, Rhea makes it. Big time bucket. 94-90 at that point in game four. And those are those moments where Players, the caliber of Kawhi, they step up. For sure, for sure. I mean, those are a minute to go, and and all of a sudden it goes from a, you know, if he misses, it's a one-point game, and you're desperately needing any kind of stop you can get, or you got a two-possession game, right? And it's a, you know, as they say, it's a dagger shot. Take us now into that locker room after now you have this 2-2, right? Well, again, similar things, Matt. This is 2-2, two, two, and it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take six or seven, right? Even though we've kind of maybe grabbed a little bit of momentum, we're coming back home. And even, even after the next one, when we go up 3-2, you're, you're trying to, everybody's trying to celebrate and act like you've won the series, and you just can't. You know, you just got to understand there's a lot of work to be done. Take us inside the huddle. 4.2 seconds left. Yeah. You got side out of bounds. Everybody, by the way, pretty much knows where the ball's going, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody, you know, right? So take us inside there and relive that moment for us. Well, I, I say this. Fortunately, I think it, it clicked pretty good for me, right? I, I immediately knew what, what we were doing, what we were going to run. The only thing that was an adjustment is we had the big lineup in there. So I had to actually move four guys' positions 
normally that we run this play. So four guys out of the five were doing something different. We were playing well. I thought we had multiple chances to win it in regulation. I thought, you know, we missed some free throws and things, you know, happened that, that got us to that point. Probably shouldn't have got there, to be honest. And I thought, oh, if it goes into overtime, we'll be okay. You know, we'll be okay. And I think kind of conveying that sense of calm, I think the players felt that too. And, and again, you know, Kawhi makes a once in a li lifetime shot and, and a once in a lifetime moment there that none of us are ever going to forget. And, um, Again, I don't get tired of watching this. I don't get tired of watching this clip ever. That's for sure. All right, well, let's watch it. Kawhi up top. Looks at the clock. Turns the corner for the win. Go <laughs> Kawhi Leonard! With the game winner! <laughs> If you don't love that emotion pouring out of Kawhi, because that, that's some that's some built up emotion that that guy's been holding in for a lot for a long time, man. To see that is uh, is a uh, certainly special part of it. That's for sure. Game three, double overtime. Well, um, the cakewalk that was game three. <laughs> Is <laughs> is not an easy one to to to, to recall. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, and a huge moment for Fred, a huge moment for our team that we could overcome 0-2 and 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 our star player Kyle Lowry fouling out and still get it done and get back in the series. Second OT, Lopez to the ball. It's rejected by Siakam. Siakam from the blind side. with a beautiful move and scores! Well, it's a great clip. Defense leading to offense, right? And a game-saving defensive play there by Pascal on the block. And, and then everybody quickly shifting down and getting great spacing and giving Kawhi the room to go to work and him making a, a powerful, powerful move there to, to finish it off. I want to now, here you are, you're leading the series. You've won three in a row. Serge has set it down. We'll win four in a row. You head in to game number six. Here we go. Behind the back. Then Kyle steps in, steals it. Lowry to left and it's over Well, Maddie, I mean, I mean it's it just is another one of those moments where you just kind of, as games were going by, there's just more spectacular plays at both ends, and just another one where you're you're kind of going, whoa, did <laughs> you see that, you know, and and on we go. So it was a, a culmination of a lot of spectacular plays, that's for sure. The Raptors have arrived on the NBA Finals scene after 24 seasons in the league. And there's great pride in their basketball in this country. Hey, Nick. Hey, good luck. You guys have been amazing. We're set to jump it up. You see, I was thrilled to see Coach Kerr there huh? before <laughs> I'm not a big fan of uh, of talking to the opponent right before the game. Uh, kind of got my game face on there, as you can probably see. <laughs> Did he catch you a little bit off guard? Like, hey, what do you, you know? Again, I'm, I was getting used to the little bit of the celebration of being this far and being in this spectacle that everybody was like, you know, like you said, it's the first time the finals had ever been outside the United States. So, yeah, you know, you got to. You gotta adjust and take things as they go a little bit. No, no big deal. No big deal. Then you lead into game two. You have Barack Obama, President Barack Obama there, and you could tell that this was just, you know, the NBA Finals. It is at another level. Hey, I'm coming out to the to the court, and uh, Barack Obama's coming down the hallway, and and it's a it's a you know it's a stop and and shake his hand and, and get to meet him for the first time. And, and you're right, you're saying, whoa, Obama's here. <laughs> you know, this must be a bit, <laughs> this must be a big one tonight. So, so uh, you know, you, you, you're you sensing it. And I think you're also sensing that people say, man, not only are we here, 
we might we might win this thing. You know, we might win this thing. You know, so um, on we go to game two. Pass over to Clay Thompson. Thompson bubbles and a splash, a three ball for Clay Thompson. A top pass. Iguodala puts it up. It's good. Golden State has tied the final. It's an angle. Gets fouled. Oh, oh, it's a great match. Great offensive score for Toronto. They come to Oakland and win game three. Sidestep three. The ultimate maestro in the second half. Ibaka on a slam. Toronto Raptors have won game four. That's a powerful one. My first question is, how did all those people get tickets? <laughs> they must have spent some money. They must have spent some money to get tickets. But man, that, hey, that's Derek, the first time I've ever seen that. That is, uh, you know, that is that is something. That is really something. I've had the the pleasure and the privilege to see that on numerous occasions, and I don't think that there's another NBA team that travels the way the Raptor fans travel. They are, without question, the best. Leonard, back up, Van Fleet. Van Fleet kicks it out, Lowry, Lowry for the win, won't go, and there'll be a game six in Oakland. And it was a great job of double teaming Leonard so he couldn't. It's 106-105, Kyle Lowry has that shot, and Draymond just gets a piece of it, but I'll, I'll never forget leaving the arena that night, running into you in the garage, and you said to me, Ah, don't worry, Maddie. He's like, nobody said it was going to be easy. He said, we'll get this. That's what you said to me. We'll get this. You still had that confidence at that point after a really tough game five. Yeah, again, I think we played well. You know, yeah, did we, you know, we kind of had a lead there with a couple minutes to go. Um, they made some humongous shots, three, three in a row, bombs to, to change the game there late. Give them credit. Um, went their way, uh, and, and I think I, I took it as this: is, is yeah, we 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 would have loved to win it, you know, four one at home in front of our own fans, but this was a tremendous experience, right? Like like I wasn't tired of coaching in the NBA Finals. Yeah, I wasn't tired of getting on the plane and going through this again, and. And I was going to enjoy it, right? If it was going to be one more game or two more games or however many it took to get there, you know, we were going to we were going to kind of approach it that way. And I saw the team on the plane the next day and their body language and, and a little bit of their communicative language. I knew we were ready and I knew we were OK, right? We were not devastated. We were not like, oh, we let a, a golden opportunity get away. None of that stuff. We just were like, let's go. There's two more chances here. Let's go get one. All right, that one is game six. Cutting hard, we're cutting harder. We're chasing harder, okay? Dogged determination to limit the touches and the shot attempts and the kickouts. Make a play, make a play, make another play, make an effort. It's everybody's job. I'm fired up, I'm ready to play, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that wall, man? I'm running through it. <laughs> so leading up, and you said you had this sense, of the team was ready to go prior to game six. And I think it starts with Kyle, right? I just, I just look at Kyle and exchange a few sentences here and there, and, and I just have this, now, did I know he was gonna come out and do what he did to start game six? No, I don't think anybody could have guessed that, but I just sensed that he was, he was ready, no fear. Um, you know, the let it rip was ready to go, and he was gonna lead that charge coming out of the gates. Yeah, there's no question about that greatest Raptor of all time. There in that game six are things that I remember, and obviously it's the start of Kyle, but it's also Freddie with the shot, and then you just see the emotion pouring out of him as you go to timeout. What a step back, and he drills a three! Freddie, the Freddie roar. That's a, that's a great that's a great roar and again I'm just sitting here watching this Maddie and I know you know it's Fred and Pascal involved in that action well why because you know Kyle and Kawhi were occupied with some great defenders and 
and to be able to shift to those two younger guys and put them in the action there, tied up 101, I think it was, and and to have those guys deliver was it was such a interesting, neat thing because we were moving those pieces around like crazy each possession on the offensive end like that. No fouls to give. Siakam drives, gets past Green, throws it up and in. Pascal Siakam makes it a three-point game. Yeah, what a composed move there, right? He makes a hard move. He's got Draymond on him just with great tempo and pace and touch and critical, critical bucket. That is years and months in the making, those sort of moments for Pascal Siakam. Yeah, and again, we're, we're using quiet and moving, and, and they, they make a chess move back and end up somehow with Draymond back on Pascal, but, but he's got to take him on, and, and he does it. And uh, really spectacular play by a number of guys. We could go through a long list of guys that had huge games uh, in the finals or in the playoffs, and, and that's really a key to, to winning it for us. The end of the game, you know, there's a difference between game clock and real time. In real time, it was agonizing, right? Uh, when you're going through that at those end of the game moments, all the fans are like, can this clock move just a little bit quicker, right? Before anything happens, you got to see those zeros on the clock. Yeah, for sure, and this is about as weird an ending as you could get to any game, let alone a, a finals clinching game with the, the timeout and the technical and all that stuff. And and uh, I kind of hit me right away when they rolled on the ball and called timeout that they don't have any. And 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 I see the ref call a technical right away, and I'm like, you're not gonna call a technical, really here? <laughs> but he he had to, and and uh, everybody's up, kind of knowing this has got to be it right this has got to be the clinching moment and I remember grabbing Nate Bjorkren my assistant who was also my assistant at Iowa and pulled him I said let's let's go sit down let's go sit down and, and let's just let this play out and wait till it actually hits zero before we before we get up you know, all right well let's relive this moment Canada the NBA title is yours the Toronto Raptors are the 2019 NBA Champions! That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Again, Kawhi showing him tremendous emotion. And we always talk about how smart Kyle is and how he makes plays. He even made one final play and he, he caught the ball. <laughs> of course, he caught the ball and, and could, he wasn't letting anybody have that thing. So he was smart enough to, to figure out he was going to get that game ball for his, for his memento, that's for sure. But uh, Fred Pascal, everybody, um, you know, again, it's, it's a tremendous uh, release of everything you worked for, you know, coming to fruition and, and uh, a great moment for, for happy for the players, most of all, Maddie, and then obviously coaches and fans right behind that, but players really put a lot into it and got a lot out of it. Well, it was a magical, magical moment. And you think about just an entire country being behind this one team in those uh, two months. You then, of course, arrive back into Toronto. You land and you get off the plane how were you surprised to see all the fans lined up and you're over there high-fiving everybody? Certainly a, a ton of fans out there and um, I don't know, I just I just went over there. I felt somebody had to acknowledge these people, great people for coming out and celebrating. So I wanted to go over there and, and give them five, you know, and, and thank them for, for their support and coming out, you know, coming out to, to greet us. And we've seen the growth of the game. This is gonna be another part of it. Over the last three years, Canada has been second to the United States in having players in the NBA. And it's just going to continue. There's going to be this afterglow from the NBA Finals, as well as uh, the young girls are going to be playing in the WNBA. Well, I agree with you. Wait, wait 10 or 15 years here. You know, there's a lot of talent coming out of this country now, but wait, wait 10 or 15 years because of, I, I think, this moment. I, 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 I know it. When, when we got back from this and I'd go to the park, the parks were packed with kids kids playing. Uh, I never noticed that before, but you know, everywhere you drive, kids were bouncing balls and shooting hoops and, and all that stuff. And again, just, just adds another 
uh, incredible layer to the whole experience for everybody. Never seen anything like that parade. I'm sure I never will again. That was really something today. Thank you all for coming out. One last thing. Hold on a second. One last thing. I think it was Bono who said the world needs more Canada. The world just got it. Congratulations. I love, I love that quote, Matty D. I don't know if you've uh, seen it or not, but it's, it's on the second floor of the, of the arena, the suite level one. And that's how I, I usually enter every day for a game. And I go by that thing every day and stop and read that. And um, I thought it was appropriate, you know? I thought it was really appropriate. And it's, it's, appropriate, it's appropriate now too, you know? You know, when you think about everyone out there along that parade route, uh, just the, the moments and the stories, uh, the lives, the faces, uh, it's something that you'll cherish forever. I think we'll all cherish that. What are some of your thoughts from, from being out there, you know, on top of a bus? Well, it was, it was incredible. I said it there that, that I, I never experienced that again. I just don't think you will. First time winning it here. Um, again, my, my first and lasting impression is looking down at all those kids of, of every color from all over the world that were cheering on the Raptors, you know, unifying people. Uh, over a tremendous team and a tremendous city and a, and a tremendous country. It was, it's, it's my thought going through there. Is just, I can still see those kids all just so happy and, and cheering as I look down and, and um, got to go through that parade route. It was awesome. Well, thank you for that. Look, it's a lot of fun to relive these moments. Some 365 days later, 12 months later, let's, let's do it again. <laughs> I'm in, man. Let's let's do it again. We're gonna. We, hey, our team our team's playing great, and I see no reason why not. Let's let's give it a shot, man. That's for sure. Thanks, coach. Thank you, Maddie.